Um, you know, had a that way you will uh, utilize the uh, fats a lot better. Protein allows the fats to be utilized properly. Fats can't be utilized without protein, and protein cannot be utilized without fat. So that's why I like to put them together. And that's why I advise having most of your fat at that meal. Whenever you have a fat with a fruit, it will be for detoxification, not for building or strengthening. Know that when you put fat, no matter what kind of fat it is, you put it with a fruit or a vegetable juice, and it will cause detoxification. This is in, um, as far as trying to hydrate yourself with all that fasting, it takes years to rehydrate or re lubricate every cell. You were at such an extreme point. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to be a while before you feel balanced. You just have to make it through. What about the tomatoes then? The what? Tomatoes. Just tomatoes with a little cream would be a little bit better. Are you, uh, like, I'm thinking about small cherry tomatoes, I just pop them in. Yeah, they're easier to eat. Can you eat them all day long? Or all day long. long. You have the quarter a day if you like, or more. And some, with some cream, just right. pour it on them, or <clears throat> you can blend it. And have it together or drink a sip of cream and eat your tomato. Okay. And then the coconut uh, juice, like, is that okay? Well, the coconut, you're talking about coconut milk, right? Coconut milk, yeah. Okay. The coconut milk, in my experiments, have been a little funny. You can get the Thailand or the Chinese coconut that tastes very funny. There's some kind of a chemical in it, and it causes cramping in the tissues in some positions. It's, has a high alkaloid reaction. So those are not good. If you get Mexican, Costa Rican, any of the South American, or any of the islands, stay away from the Thai, Thai, Thailand coconuts and the Chinese coconuts. You're putting something in the fields or doing something with it that's not making it very good and it's causing a um, <clears throat> pancreatic problem. Diabetic type reactions with some people. So don't advise that one. But otherwise, you could drink the coconut milk and it's fine. Mm. The water. The water is the milk. The cream is the what we juice from the meat. Okay. There's another spot out here if somebody would like it. OK. Hi. Okay, next question. Hi. Okay. Uh, when I was three, I had hepatitis. My mom tells me she was a nurse. She gave it to me. And I never had any problems, but I have had migraines my whole life. Uh, and um, recently, they've gotten better because I went off hormone and went through menopause better. The only time I haven't had them is when I was pregnant and nursing. No, no mic. But I was reading about what you said about hepatitis and the pineapple and what you said about the migraines and um, not having meat and dairy and having honey every five minutes. And I'm wondering if the migraines do you think the hepatitis is connected to migraines? Usually, um, not unless you're eating a lot of fats that can't be digested, that can cause high blood pressure from blood toxicity, which causes a headache. Um, that's a toxic headache. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly it's salt. Mostly salt for the migraines. Some people are very allergic to salt if they have a one grain of salt at a meal, that's enough to set off a migraine. I tried to tell my father that for years, and then when he went to the doctor, and the doctor, you know, he started having a heart urethra, um, yeah. <clears throat> and the um, doctor said, well, stop counting and stop eating, uh, stop counting your heartbeat, so don't worry about it, and yeah, it's just a common sense thing that the doctors say, so stop eating salt, stop eating salt as migraines one day, you know, 
waited until he was 67 to go to Latin. Even with Celtic salt? Even with Celtic salt. Any kind of salt. And you know, salt is a sodium concentration, and the sodium is not bioactive. What about when it's swimming? And it doesn't get to the skin easily. Sodium doesn't absorb to the skin easily. Not unless it's bioactive with enzymes. I mean, there's not a lot of enzymes in salt water. Well, it destroys bacteria, and you need lots of bacteria when you have cancer. So it isn't that you absorb the salt, but the salt will destroy the bacteria all the way to the connective tissue. Now, it won't get to the lymph system that can destroy it. People who have, you know, uh, skin cancer, melanoma, mm -hmm. lymphatic cancer, they need that bacteria. Let me give you an example. Okay, I don't know if those of you remember, I had those injections when I was 12 years old uh, <clears throat> for peritonitis. They gave me 12 shots in this arm. About two-thirds of them were penicillin, so there was lots of thimer salt. So it's stored in my um, bursa in this joint, and that was part of my blood and bone cancer. This was the worst arm. Well then, at the end of uh, April of this last year, it started detoxifying. It was the day before I had to drive up to Nevada City to do a lecture and workshop and see patients for five days. And they had to go directly from there to San Francisco to do the same thing. By the time I hit Sacramento, I was in so much pain that I had to buy a swing to keep my arm in. And I could only stand or sit without excruciating pain with my arm in a sling. So that night and every other night, I had to sleep in a bathtub with milk and uh, vinegar and, and the sea salt in it to make my body buoyant enough to where my arm would float without pain. Uh, six weeks after that, a whole scab opened up. Now what happened was after five days, my hand turned black. <clears throat> it was a charcoal gray after getting out of the bathtub for about six hours, sleeping in it. it. Smelled just like mercury. So I knew it was the thymerous all from all the penicillin that I had gotten when I was 12 because the same situation. I had kept, while I was in the bathtub, I kept dreaming of being back there as that child of 12 years old, being injected, and all that pain that I had in my arm was identical. Now, six weeks after that, a whole scab appeared here. And then uh, about six weeks after that, a tumor appeared. It got twice as big as it is now. And then I took some phacal matter from a deer and put it on it, and it stopped it right away. Sorry I did that, because then the, the detoxification started going to the elbow and the hand. You know, so there's more pain. I should just let it run its course. But the bacteria works very quickly. That is my point here. Put the phacal matter, the E. coli on this, and it turned it into a wart within a week. And I only put it on twice. It worked that quickly to get rid of the tumor. Bacteria is very important for the body, so if you want to salt water, it can destroy the bacteria. Okay. Anyway, salt is an ingredient. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay away from salt like it's a plague, because it is a plague. Okay. And hepatitis is always the uh, very last ditch um, savior for the liver, any of the hepatitis. Whether it's viral or bacterial, it goes in there to break up the extreme toxicity in the liver. And if you have hepatitis and you're eating properly lots of red raw meat, you'll reverse that liver condition faster than any other way. So the hepatitis is almost like a bacteria, a um, parasite, it will work that quickly consume or dissolve that much toxic liver tissue. So it's a good thing to have hepatitis. If I was trying to save its liver at three, that means you've got very toxic and very young. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I wonder if I passed any of that on to him. Well, know, he's, because... yeah, he's got a weak condition. So. Right. Anytime anybody has a bad liver, the liver, you know, breaks down fats, digests fats, and if you don't have the good liver, you're going to be weaker, the body will absorb the poisons, poisons will go intracellular instead of inter, um, lipid, inter, instead of entering the fat, it will enter the cell, 
then it's the RNA and DNA and all the other structures within the cell. And that's what poisons the body. That's why I say don't be skinny. Skinny people are the ones who have the worst condition later on. If you have a healthy liver and you're, say, in the ocean and a sewage spill comes along or something, could you contract hepatitis? Not like that. People don't get hepatitis from getting in the ocean. Medical profession loves to blame anything natural, bacteria. Their theory is the bacteria theory. Bacteria is responsible for all disease. Bacteria is just the response of disease. Bacteria is there to help get rid of the uh, toxicity, just like vultures and crows eat decaying flesh. Well, how about it's like surfers that contract hepatitis from, say, surfing in a sewage, a sewage spill, the area or something? Um, would you say that they already had a toxic liver? They already and had that a toxic just... liver, yeah. You don't contract hepatitis from sewage. Like I say, doctors and medical profession love to blame that, but there's no scientific proof of that. They've taken animals and put them in solutions like that, and they've never got a hepatitis. So the medical profession gets away with saying a lot of BS. But nobody holds them to it. That's a, that's a point. Raw oil. What raw oils? I have a friend who's working with a young man, you know, similar to your son. He had brain surgery and, and um, his man, 1506 up in Oregon, uh, is working with him with a raw food diet and he's trying to regrow his brain. But he was talking about oil, you know, raw oil. So well, you don't want to use oil to regenerate brain tissue, you do just the opposite. So are oils are there to, our oils are 90% solvent reactive. That means they act like soaps, they act like dis dissolution compounds. They're going to dissolve toxicity. So if you were, uh, maybe I'm saying it wrong, uh -huh. that's why I'm asking you, because I'm hearing this second hand. Um, that there are raw, raw oils that are like raw foods, but maybe they're not. Like not coconut oil. Coconut is the closest mm -hmm. to an animal fat, but it's still 60%, 60 to 40 to 60% solid reactive. Mm -hmm. So you really want to go with raw butter? Raw butter, raw cream. Mm -hmm. For the brain, raw cream is a little bit more important. Mm -hmm. Lots of raw eggs. Yeah. Lots of meat. Um, what I do is I go to a lot of um, breakfasts, like early breakfasts, like 7 a.m. And, you know, what I've generally been getting is salad, you know, the uh, romaine lettuce and um, tomatoes with lemon. But then I have to, according to, you know, the book, um, once I eat a salad, I shouldn't eat for five hours because salad has to get to the intestines. Now, um, well, it doesn't get, it has to get far enough to have. That nothing because else is going to happen. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I'd like to know a little bit more about that because sometimes, you know, I'm coming out of that meeting and I, only time I'm going to have to eat is then. So I'm eating maybe, I'm, I'm asking myself whether I should eat at the two or three hour point. And if I do choose to eat then, um, what kind of damage am I doing rather than if I wait to five hours? And that's the first part of my question. And the second part of the question is what kind of a salad can I start eating at these 7 a.m. breakfast meetings? where I can um, not have to go through this five-hour thing. I'm thinking like avocado, tomato, um, onion. Um, can I use, um, how, how much farther can I, can I go like um, cucumber with no skin? Or is that getting into the five-hour type thing? Um, green onions, um, uh, regular onions. Can you give me some, shed some insight on how I can create this salad? A little, plus a little information <laughs> about the about what it, just more more information about the five hour thing and, and what I'm pushing and what I'm doing if I if I'm eating if I'm eating before the five hey, hour period. You see this leaf here in this stalk? We're not made to eat this stuff. Okay, it takes a vegetarian animal 48 hours to pass it through their system. It goes through less than 24. They have 60,000 times more enzymes to disassemble the cellulose molecule.
but then you still look at cow shit and deer shit and it's still full of fiber. Not even they do it well. So what happens is it slows everything down and also over alkalinizes the intestines. And the intestines have to be acid in order to digest animal product. If they start mixing it, to, uh, the acid foods catch up with it, they neutralize each other and neither of them digest right. That's why you want to make sure that if you have a salad, it's the last thing before you go to bed. So you wake up five hours later, you dock down an egg or some milk that's not going to catch up with it, and make sure your meat's eight hours later or so. So it won't catch up with it. So meat has to be eight hours after a salad? It should be eight hours. Wow. Um, what, what can take is, is avocado and, and tomato, is that not a salad? No, it's not a salad. What else can I add to that to make it not a salad? Onion? Onion is, a, is a cellulose. And you're going to have small amounts of it even with meat, but it's, uh, you know, it's, still, it's still fiber. Can I add anything? There's a little bit, it's okay. But, but I can have as many tomatoes and, and, and avocados. Right. Is there anything else I can add to that at all? A little bit of cilantro or... But not much. Not much. Yeah. Not much. And then, you know, if you do that, then if you do have a salad, then just down a lot of eggs about three hours later, two and a half, three hours later. Okay. And the eggs are going to absorb even, you know, a few minutes after they leave the duodenum. But no more than an hour. But no more than three or four hours after. No earlier than three or four hours after the salad. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Earlier than two and a half hours. Four eggs. Four eggs. Yes, four eggs. Four eggs. Um, why four? And that's four, <laughs> meaning eggs. Four, egg is a product. You can eat eggs two and a half hours after eating a salad. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. As many eggs as I want to, but no meat for eight hours? Yeah. Really? How about milk and butter? Uh, same thing? It depends on how much you eat. What butter, about? butter and fat don't depend upon the intestines for digestion. Most of that's digested in the uh, liver. Could I have like my, my fruit and my and my uh, butter milk, my fruit milk and my animal fat meal? Four or five hours after that? If your animal meal is conducive to the the uh, fruit? I'm just butter or cream and, and, and fruit. That's what the fruit is. If you're having red meat, you don't want citrus with it unless it's a little bit of pineapple. If it's you know, fish or uh, you know, some kind of seafood or a fowl, then you could have almost any kind of fruit with it as long as there's fat with it. Food and fat together. The reason for that is, like I said in the book, if you mix fruit with red meat, it usually turns it into a detoxifier or a fuel instead of for regenerating cells. Most people don't like to eat too much meat. So if they eat it, then why waste it? It's fuel when you can regenerate cells and you can get it to make you younger, more vital, and stronger. Use your fat to, uh, to burn this fuel. Okay. said you had the indications of bone cancer all at the bottom of your body yeah. most of the tear so that's the worst part of it your bone your bone marrow is so toxic your bones are so toxic that when they go into detoxification the nerves at night that's when they drop hot baths like i say they alleviate that right. when i had my blood and bone cancer i practically lived in baths so i was in constant pain and when i get in there for some reason, the electrical impulses of pain just get diffused in the water. It just takes it right out of the body in instead the of going up to the brain. In the bath would be the milk. The milk, yeah. Two cups of milk, two ounces of vinegar, and two tablespoons of sea salt. Even sometimes when I, I've noticed when I would take ice baths, like it would just make, make me feel more exhausted. 
that's because you weren't putting the milk vinegar no, and because in 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 uh, San Diego you have about 152 chemicals in your water. In LA we have 192. So you need the uh, and let me tell you that the they just look for bacteria. They don't look for the poisons. They call the bacteria poisons. They don't want to blame industry for polluting your water, and that's what's really killing you and causing the problem. But that's the fact. How much vinegar? Uh, two ounces. Whenever you take a bath, you should use the vinegar and salt. Not vinegar, salt, salt, and milk. So it can be, it can be raw milk. Yes, raw milk. Absolutely. It's it's salt. Salt. Uh, any sun-dried sea salt. No, no. When I talk about a sun-dried sea salt, it's always you know, a mixture of minerals. Yeah. It's not sodium chloride isolate. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is, they sell it as such. They would uh, sell it as sea salt because it's what you see, but they put it as they have to sell it in sulfate that's going to Well, if it's sun-dried, never. Because when they, yeah, when, they, when, they, when they bleach it and chlorinate, they don't stick it out in the sun. So they they kill dry it. They, you know, they make glass here, they do it outside. Pardon? They make glass here, New Zealand. Zealand. They, they do it outside. They chlorinate it, bleach it, and then they put it outside. It, they separate it from one pond to the other. The first thing that separates down is something from that to the other side. Then they run it into the next pond, and they've got these huge acres in the acres of the pond. And the next pond, out comes sodium chloride. They then take the little off, send it to another pond, and send it out to the sea. They take out because they want it because if they need some of the other minerals, especially calcium sulfate, it's going to present. And they need to worry about it. And all sunrise. I rang them up. The people were saying to me, oh, I know it's not. So that's just correct. Well, just don't look for white salt. No, it's got to be dirty looking salt. Exactly. Always. And it has to be raw milk. You can't. I think you need to buy pasture. Oh, the best vinegar is Bragg's apple cider vinegar because they age it in wood instead of metal. So the bacteria grows better, ferments better. Is there a way to measure some of the bacteria content easily? Like you could test things out? it is, even if it's not foul, the more active it is. Can you do that with honey? Because I was reading your book and you mentioned that some manufacturers that sell raw honey have actually heated it a little heated, bit. Yeah. Can you smell that or would you just... Yeah, you can smell it. It tastes like a heavy, it would smell heavy and flat instead of, um, in my nose, it causes uh, an opening of the pores. But when it's flat, it's, it's, and you smell it, there's not... It doesn't open up the pores in the same way as flat. More dull. Yeah, okay. dull. It's a heavier smell. Sometimes Tupelo is heated and it has that same fragrance, but it's a heavy, heavy time. That's so on that one. We'll be okay. But Tupelo, when it's raw, is very thick, like syrup. You know, if it's thin, you know it's been heated. No, usually it will help pull salts out of the skin as long as the bath is hot. If the bath were cold, like in the ocean, it could absorb into something. Okay, so hot. How hot? Good idea. 105. Okay, you mean hot. Just don't cook all, don't so cook yourself, don't get it up to 108 and stay in for 10 minutes. You know, keep it about 104, 103 and stay in for a couple of hours. Just, just the, um, the, um, the 
what we do is, unless it's about the same exact subject, we go around and take everybody. Thank you. Well, I was just going to ask about the crucible when you were talking about how they can use it. Well, they have, a, they have, you know, they stay on pretty raw diets, so they don't have the same complication of the time frame that we have to digest. So I know they eat more diet. Yeah. They can eat the mixture. But they don't eat cooked foods. No. They don't spoil their intestinal tract and the whole chemistry. So you mean it because it's right the whole way through. We've yeah. spoiled, even though they're on raw foods now, we have ruined it from being on raw foods. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. That's fine, but it still won't work as quite as well as the milk because the milk has a little bit of fat in it. It helps seal the skin properly and helps feed the skin. It helps it perspire more. Clay has a little bit of oil and it will work to an extent, just depends on what kind of clay you're using. The French clay, the green clay is okay. So in a situation like that, there's an alternative realistic alternative to the rock. Put some coconut, coconut in it. Coconut with mixed with the um, the uh, clay. About how much coconut? Cream. Coconut cream, I said. Yeah, coconut cream. I would say um, I'd say four tablespoons for that. Steve. Last time we had a. Uh, Well, I would say for about five years, you should not play those with Frisbee. Uh. <laughs> 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 Anybody who plays Ultimate Frisbee has to play. <laughs> yeah, you probably just have uh, just coincidence and started detoxifying okay. at that time. It's never happened before. Okay. Well, it's time for you to clean it out. Okay. Like this, that sat in there for what, 40 years? Yeah, for a now, 44 years. And just do the best, just to bind the yeah. Cream is a little bit better to bind the person. I've got that in the book, so I'm not going to answer that one. Okay. She asked, uh, would you use for poison ivy, poison oak? Pulling around there, and that's in the book. So, I don't answer that. do you have another question? For you or your daughter? For you? You mean like PMS symptoms? Pardon? Yeah. Well, most of the time, um, when the body's getting ready to go into menstrual menstruation, um, you're going to throw off a lot of hormones. And with that, there's a lot of red blood cell loss, so the whole uh, fat level gets very low. So does the bacterial level, because along with those toxic hormones, from neurological impulses, psychological trauma. When that's sort of detoxifying, there's always alkaloids along with it. And the alkaloids are like an antibiotic and they will destroy bacteria. So the bacteria level gets low, then the body has to do everything with solvents and fat. It has to do everything on its own. And if you were given a whole week's work to do in two days, you wouldn't like it either. So the body gets depressed get it depressed along with it. The bacteria helps you break down these compounds. So then the body feels lighter. That's why when people eat the high meat, they get silly. You know, 99% of everybody who eats the high meat gets high within about 10 to, to 20 minutes. They start giggling, you know, and start feeling good because the body all of a sudden has a lot of health. 
has to solve with bacteria to deal with these, this degenerative matter that's in your body. So that's why. Okay, so eat high meat, lots of high meat, and make sure you eat lots of moisturizing formula during those periods. So you have enough bacteria and fats in the blood. And that will mitigate those problems. You might even have, uh, you know, two moisturizing formulas a day, one with each meat. Or make a large one and have half of it at both meals. Susan. Suzanne. I did a question about natural mineral baths or mineral springs. The only one I have access to at this time because of my circumstances, circumstances is the um, Beverly Hot Springs in Los Angeles. And um, uh, I hope you can using it when I can. And the, the, the like well, you know, it's, you know, the, the well that's right, they get it right out of the ground in LA. And you know, that LA river goes through there is pretty polluted and it has radioactive material and it has everything so it's not the best. I stopped going there you know, when I started getting ill reactions in the 70s. It's best to go out to uh, you know, Glen Ivy. Yeah, Marietta that's also out that same area. Marietta Hot Springs but they haven't been open for a while. Yeah. Well you can go to Marietta on certain days in the middle of the week organization purchase the property so on weekends it's exclusive right yeah seminars and stuff but they will let people just in the middle of the week I went there and they wouldn't oh maybe it was me I know someone that wants to share a membership <laughs> if anybody wants to uh, get in on that yeah what about Warner it's good it's yeah Hakumba that both neither of them got chlorinated chlorinated and a lot of chlorinated today yeah but they those two are well, they only they only have that one indoors there that I know of. The pool is from the spring. Yeah. Yeah, the pool is not created. No. No. Well, that's fine. It's just not hot. Well, the water one is. Yeah. The one at the pool comes with not the pool. That's heated? Uh, hey, no, it's, it's, it's very hot. Yeah. Oh, did you say Warner? Warner, Warner she said. Warner, hot. Warner, hot. Interpret. Warner, Warner. I don't know. Warner. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. It will be tonight. You know? Yeah, you can. You have to stay at night because they are a private yeah. owned. Oh, and okay. You have to stay at night, so it's good to have two people. Wow. And But you can, they have a sauna as well. And the people are sort of plumbing and a bit straight. I just kept to myself. And <laughs> 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 I told them I didn't, if they could turn the music off. Horrible single, you know, loud stuff going, and I think, if I had been this guy who was reading the newspaper, called me, oh, I'd be sick. Go to Glen Ivy. We also have a friend of mine who has, who I stay with in San Diego, has a tub that's like a spa tub. 